What's up, YouTube? I wanted to give you guys a quick video on Calorpa. Now, I did have Calorpa inside my sump um, for a few weeks, and I managed to get some good growth out of the Calorpa. Uh, I noticed my levels were going down as I was as I was removing the Calorpa from my tank. Um, nitrates and phosphates were steadily lowering. Um, it was actually strong enough to rid my tank of hair algae and big patches of cyano I had with the help of GFO of course and water changes but I know they all do play a small part in uh, helping each other out but um, the main point I want to get to though is my tank was getting really really dirty a lot more than usual and you can see um, I'm showing you what it looks like before I go ahead and scrub it and you can see in the back those little white dots that I got on my overflow and what those are those are actually beneficial worms um, if your tanks doing really good in the beginning uh, you might get some of those worms if uh, your water quality is really good um, but if your tanks established or have been up and running for a while and those white dots begin to start coming back um, it's usually a sign of high nutrients in your tank and I couldn't figure out what I was doing um, you know, I was cutting back on my feedings and stuff like that, but, um, you know, I, I did lose a chromis. I found his body. I got him out, so I thought that was the cause. Um, you know, my chromis went inside one of the rocks, and I had to dig him out uh, with a turkey baster, basically blowing in all the cracks until I found him. And he kind of just came out like a gray, cloudy, you know, puff of smoke out of the rock. He was disintegrating already, or decomposing, sorry. Um... So, I couldn't figure out the cause of this issue, and long story short, it was my Calorpa. So, as you can see now, it's, it's during the day, it's midday, my refugium light is off. Now, with an algae like Calorpa, um, it needs to be lit 24 hours or it will go asexual. And when it goes asexual, it's trying to basically spread its seed um, you know to take over the tank basically uh, there, I know there's parts in like California where Calupa, Calurpa is banned or something, something like that I, I don't know details but uh, basically it overtook the coast and just grew everywhere and messed with the biological filtration and that's just to give you an idea of how strong this stuff is and it actually started to swallow all my rubble rock and you know connected to everything inside the tank I mean it, this stuff's nasty if, if it gets its anchors into anything you're gonna have the hardest time in the world trying to remove it so if it starts to spread I would definitely get those little loose pieces out immediately um, the other thing about the asexual now when it begins to melt uh, basically decompose in the tank uh, because it's either stressed or something's wrong where the levels are just not right for the macroalgae itself where it, just, it starts to melt and it spreads itself and when it does that it releases all the nutrients that it sucked out of your tank so all the nitrates and phosphates that it took out it's reintroducing them back into your tank and therefore your tank will start looking like it's going through a cycle again so you know for a while I didn't I thought my Calorpa was fine so I grew it into a big bunch you know a big ball uh, I should say and I was trimming it and with this light it was doing really good it was dark green but the ball was too big so with Calorpa you got to keep it in smaller uh, like, like smaller patches in your refugium uh, because you don't know what's going on in the inside of the Calorpa now, I really wish I would have kept it to show you guys um, how it was turning white, and um, you can see the little the little grape ball. It was the, actually the grape color pump. The little grapes were turning really, really white. Uh, it was getting like white fuzzies on like the tips of the branches and the leaves and stuff like that. So it was ready to pop. And if I didn't catch it this time, it basically probably would have wiped out my tank. But I caught it on time, and what led me to realize that it was going asexual on the inside of the ball was a growth of cyano that was hanging off on the side of the 
colobra itself. It looked like a red spot, like like some red slime algae hanging out on the side. And when I split the colobra in half, I noticed the inside was melting. Um, it was asexual. It was all white. And you know my things were inside of it having a ball. I mean all the the bugs and critters and copepods and amphipods, all those little things you see down there. There's millions of little different bugs. Uh, even my starfish, everything was inside the chloropa, just, you know, having a blast, eating everything that was coming out of it. But it was affecting my display drastically. Now, I had to wipe my glass probably like twice a day when it happened. And I did, you know, constant water changes. Uh, you know, I did a 25 gallon water change and immediately I set up for the next 25 gallon. And I waited 24 hours and did another water change. So basically my coral and stuff like that wouldn't be damaged uh, from the nutrients that were released from the chloropa. But long story short guys, um, unless you're advanced, don't attempt the chloropa. Um, it requires a 24 hour lighting and the reason why I wasn't doing it was because I have a 70 watt refugium light and that can get pretty costly as far as a 24 hour refuge. Uh, I was doing the 16 and 8 basically eight hours in the display and 16 in the sump which was doing pretty good but it was wasn't good enough to keep the colorpa from going sexual and this is a full spectrum LED and it couldn't keep the colorpa from going sexual so just a heads up on that stuff guys uh, keep an eye on it if you do have it watch it very very closely cut it up into little pieces and don't let it grow into a big bunch like you would your spaghetti uh, algae. Happy reefing.